The Mets got the critical outs and the clutch hits. Pulling away in the series opener. Game two features a terrific matchup. Jordan Zimmerman needs to come up big against Matt Harvey for the division leaders. Will the Nats tighten the race or fall further behind? Well, the numbers tell the story. The Mets have my five more wins than the Nats. Six more losses for Washington. And now it's game, T, uh, game two of the three-game series. Harper and Harvey will be battling. Even the numbers are almost the same. But Harvey has owned Bryce and the Nats this year. First order business, bad news. Ryan Zimmerman left oblique, strained a bit on a swing yesterday. We hope he's day today. Those things can be very tricky. So the Nats don't have one of their big weapons against Harvey. But the Mets have to deal with Jordan Zimmerman. Yeah, Jordan Zimmerman having a good homestand. He's been good all year at home, I should say. And he's coming off some good starts. And this is a perfect game for Jordan Zimmerman. We all remember him against San Francisco last year in the playoffs. Big game Jordan Zimmerman. He's a guy that has the slow pulse no matter what. He'll step up big time tonight. He's 4-0 in his last eight home starts with a 2-2-8 ERA. So he's ready to rock and roll against Matt Harvey in that big Mets lineup. Yeah, Harvey has been tough on the Nats this year. 27 and two-thirds innings, only three earned runs against him during that time. Hard to hit, hard to score. Well, on the first pitch this year, he's throwing 68% strikes. Opponents are hitting 337 throughout his career on the first pitch. So look for the Nats' bats to be hacking early tonight against Matt Harvey. Getting ready for game two, comparing his lineup card to that big one in the dugout. Desmond's ready. Clint Robinson in the lineup replacing Zimmerman tonight. And Rendon, Nats, Mets, next. PNC Bank for the Achiever in You by Airlines for America, where airplanes land, opportunity takes off, and by Hotel Transylvania 2 in theaters September 25th. Brisk business in the team store before this one. Game two tonight, the Mets 76 and 61. The Nats are 71 and 66. Humidity up a little bit, but it's 88. It is a warm night, partly cloudy skies. 
and a good night for baseball. We've had some great weather, and the hitters have really been loving this. Lucas Duda is back in the Mets lineup tonight. He's hitting 247 with 21 home runs, and he has nine career hits, including a homer against the Nats starter, Jordan Zimmerman. They do a little changing with their lineup. Cespit is second, and David Wright fourth. They were kind of the other way around yesterday, and Terry Collins moving guys around. So here's Zimmerman, eight and six career against the Mets. And a fourth consecutive victory last start. One earned run over six solid innings on the third against the Braves. Struck out five, walked four through 87 pitches. So the fastball this year has been averaging 93 miles an hour. Slider, curveball change, you go with it. And here we go. Granderson takes one upstairs. We're underway right on time at 7.05. He rips one foul. Right field side. Nice play. Granderson, by the way, hitting 286 since the All-Star break, raising his season's batting average to just under 260. 33-year veteran Cucci. Dana DeMuth has the plate. Two and one. And then Mike Estabrook had Hickox and Paul Nart around the bases, first, second, and third. Mets lead the season series eight to six. They've won four out of seven in Nationals Park. Remember That's Jordan's last start, excuse me, Carp. He was a little bit elevated with the fastball in the first inning against the Braves, then got some run support, really settled in, got on top of that pitch. Power in the number two spot tonight. Don't want to walk this guy. Ahead of the hitter you saw, Yoannis Cespedes. Hot night, Jordan working up a big time sweat. Got him looking. 81 on the off speed. Branderson surprised and struck out. A lot of confidence right here on a 3 2 pitch to throw the curveball. The first one of the night from Jordan Zimmerman. So, a lot of times you get a feel for that pitch before you throw it a big count. But right out of the gate, Jordan Zimmerman, very confident in the curveball, throws a 3 2 beauty to Curtis Grandison for strike three, and that's how this one starts. 137 strikeout and 173 innings. Yoenna Cespedes has homered in five of his last six games. Inside edge with mid-90s. I remember last start, he, he walked Nick Markakis to start the game. Then he walked Freddie Freeman, so he had two walks in the first inning. He walked Nick Swisher to start the second. And that's something you usually don't see from Jordan Zimmerman. Then he locked in a little bit, retired a bunch of guys in a row, and that was that for the walks. Maybe one more in the sixth, but a solid start after the first inning last time against the Braves. Well, and... We talked about this a little bit before the game because everybody's trying to figure out what's going on with Max Scherzer. NFP, I, I thought you put it really well. Not just the innings, not just the pitches, but the high stress pitches that take their toll, especially now when you're in the sixth month of the season. Yeah, he had four or five starts there where he's flirting with perfection every game. So, you know, there was never any easy starts from a sense that he didn't give up a few hits early. He was perfect. He was grinding. He was focused on every single pitch he couldn't take one pitch off so from a mental standpoint that wears you down and I think it's obvious from a physical standpoint when you're pitching nine innings and you're used to being a seven inning guy for the majority of your career that it's taking its toll I also think the first inning yesterday having the red line right out of the gate took its toll on him way inside two and two Jordan Zimmerman thus the winningest pitcher on the staff at 12 and 8, Scherzer 11 wins. Geo has 10. By the way, also today announced that uh, Tanner Roark is in the rotation now, and Joe Ross not available tonight, but he will be moving to the bullpen to save some innings on that young arm. And we all know we can depend on Tanner down the stretch as well. 3 2 to another hitter. And Cespedes hits this one out of play. He said the defense for the Nats tonight, Worth, Taylor, Harper, the outfield, Desmond Escobar, left side of the infield, Randone Robinson, right side of the infield, and Wilson Ramos behind the plate. Buffalo with a big grand salami yesterday. 3-2 again. Busted bat. Desmond grabs it. Fires. 
Great play. Two outs. Well, wow, lots going on on this one. Jordan Zimmerman almost took the bat. Had to get out of the way of that. You're thinking, okay, single up the middle. At least Jordan Zimmerman's okay. And then here comes Ian Desmond out of nowhere. Look at the bat. Gloves it. Sets himself as good as he can. And look at the strong arm. I mean, did a really nice job of picking up the target before he threw it. And you see the bat go flying. Not as close as I originally thought, but this is where it gets cool. Watch. Set, throw, bullet. With something on it. Nice stretch by Robinson. Great play all the way around. Here's Murphy with two outs. Some kind of talent to make that play look as easy as he just did. That is not an easy play. Mets toughest hitter against Jordan Zimmerman. He's in the batter's box right now. 339 career. 20 for 59 with four home runs. 0 2 pitch. Murphy hits it well. Left center. Taylor going after it. He's there. And the Nats flash serious defense in the top of the first. Michael Taylor showing some range. And after running the wall, not scared of it a bit. You want me on that wall? You need me on that wall. Michael Taylor with a great play. Runs. In fact, the Nationals have hit homers at least one in 12 straight games, and Jason Wirtz has been a part of that. Nine game hitting streak, five multi hit games during that time. And as a leadoff guy, hitting 329. Ryan Zimmerman noticeably absent. Solid left handed bat in that number five hole in Clint Robinson. Matt Harvey, eight career starts against the Nats, three and two, 0.99. A 9-4 win last start at Philadelphia on the second. Went six in the third innings. Gave up four runs on nine hits. Struck out nine Phillies. Walked one through 101 pitches. 68 of those for strikes. Fastball 96 miles an hour on average. And I said this in the open. First pitch 68.1% strikes. That's eighth highest out of qualified starters. Opponents hitting 337 on the first pitch career against Matt Harvey. Look for the Nats to be aggressive here tonight against the right-hander. Worth is four for 16 career against him from the right side of the rubber and that's a fastball up and away at least as the hitter looks at it first base side scheduled to be one of Harvey's last couple of starts before the end of the season maybe against the Nats in New York if they need him and maybe one time in between. So there's the worth numbers just under 330 batting a leadoff. The walks and the runs, that's what you're looking for along with the hits. 96. One ball, two strikes. You're watching his last start. He went to the changeup early, but the curveball was devastating. Probably his best secondary pitch. It goes straight down, 12 to 6 on the clock. It's very hard and it's very sharp. 158 strikeouts in 166 innings. He just wrapped up another one. Rendon and Harper the next two. 
And so the defense for the Mets tonight behind Matt Harvey, Conforto, Cespedes, Granders in the outfield, Flores right, left side, Murphy, Duda right side, and Travis Darno behind the plate, Lucas Duda back in the lineup to face the right-hander. Anthony Rendon. Three thirteen over his last 16 games. Hitting safely in 14 of those. <laughs> Anthony Rendon, two for 10 career against Matt Harvey. not messing around. You think with all the, the talk this week about Matt Harvey, it's going to go one way or the other for him tonight. He's either going to be really good or have a rough one. I feel like in between is kind of out of the question based on maybe a lot of mental energy spent over the last few days. He goes off speed with the 84, misses inside, 2-2. Two -two. Anthony works it full. In those 16 ball games I mentioned, 11 RBIs, 10 walks. He has scored 17 runs. Everybody in this offense is on base constantly lately. And Rendon lines one right up the middle. Right by the glove of Harvey into center. Well, there goes a the no hitter. The right fielder, number 34, Bryce Harper. Nice swing by Anthony Rendon right back up the middle. Now the line moves to Bryce Harper. Now Bryce has some business to take care of against Matt Harvey. 17 career official at bats, seven strikeouts, no hits, three walks in 20 plate appearances, and this one popped up left side. Playable for David Wright. Two outs, bottom of the first. And then up to the hit man in the fourth spot, Yunel Escobar. Had another multi hit game yesterday, his 42nd of the year. of career RBIs against Harvey on three hits and 12 at bats. Sixty second big league start for the 26 year old right hander. a base hit to right. So good approaches by Rendon and Escobar not trying to pull the ball two on two out. Well man Harvey staying away with the fastball taking what the game is giving you right now. So Anthony Rendon nice piece of hitting you know Escobar doing the same. He loves to use that hole with the runner on first and he does it flawlessly right here on the off speed pitch for Matt Harvey stays back. And now Clint Robinson with a chance to put his ball club ahead. Yeah, this would be so big in the first inning. Clint's only career hit against Harvey, a double, one for six. But a couple of RBIs attached to it. And that's a base hit to right. Here comes Rendon. He'll score easily. Over to third Escobar. 
The Nats a run on three hits right out of the gate. Well, we talked about it. 68.1% of his pitches on the first pitcher strikes. It's highest amongst qualified starters. So you know you're going to get a strike from Matt Harvey or at least close to a strike on the first pitch. Whether it's a fastball, curveball, slider, or change, you don't know. But throughout their career, opponents hitting 337 on the first pitch. Clint Robinson going up there hacking. Bullet to right. Granderson has to go to his left. An easy send for Bob Henley. One to nothing. Nats. Ian Desmond. Five career hits against Harvey. We thought he'd go up hacking. And the Nats lead 2 nothing on four first inning singles. Swing it. Keep swinging, swinging the on-deck circle, and you see the emotion from Ian Desmond at first base to Tony Tarasco. The boys are fired up. I just think aggressive plays in big games. Whether it's running the bases, whether it's at the plate, put pressure on your opponent in big games and see how they respond. How do you put pressure on them? You steal some bases, you read balls in the dirt, you come up hacking, and look at the emotion for me and Desmond almost taking Tony Tarasco's arm off. <laughs> Two nothing Nats. Now Wilson Ramos turn, seventh national to bat in the first inning. Guess what? He's swinging. Yeah, let's see what Harvey does on the first pitch. Ramos is three for six career against him. Ninety-eight, well outside. Yeah, not close enough. Wilson Ramos. 320 over his last 15 games. Grand slam yesterday, and during that time, 12 runs batted in. Better throw a quality strike on this count to this guy. He'll step out, getting time. Not that many first inning runs. That includes the two tonight. Now Harvey wanted that in a little bit more, but when you're throwing 98, you could miss a couple of inches toward the plate when you want to bury a fastball down and in. Matt Williams liking what he's seeing here early. Pitch up, and he was all over that 97. Well, the swing that lit up Nats Park yesterday. Three nothing ball game, and Wilson Ramos instantly makes it four three Nats. Horns up, place going nuts. Curtain call for the Buffalo. Got all four hoofs up on the top step. That was nice. Harvey, a long look into Darno. One two pitch. Got it. Paint on the corner at 98. Great first for the Nats. Two runs on four singles. Clint Robinson, the only man who pulled the ball.
first, but where does the momentum change? Maybe on a 3-2 curveball to Curtis Granderson for strike three. Maybe on this beautiful play by Ian Desmond going up the middle. Or maybe Michael Taylor going into the fence for the first time since he smoked the fence. So all three of those plays give the Nats a little momentum before they even put their batting gloves and helmets on. 3-2 curveball, great play up top, great play down low. Go up, score two runs. You can get momentum on defense, and that's did the top of the first. David Wright, Lucas Duda, Travis Darno for the Mets. Top of the second. That score in the first, they're 17 over. When they're scoring first anytime, 25 games over 500. David Wright hit second yesterday, went one for five with an RBI single. Scored a big run, got very excited when he was safe at home. Showing some pennant race enthusiasm. I liked it. And David Wright hitting 267 career against Zimmerman, 12 for 45. He tried to be even keel for five months, but when you're playing meaningful games in September, no such thing. High highs, low lows, roller coaster baseball show the emotion. I love David Wright, what he did yesterday. One year ago tomorrow, David Wright played his last game of the 14 season with inflammation in his left rotator cuff. So he's happy to be playing late into this season, even though he's been out quite a while. Way inside. Three two slider. David Wright only his 20th game of the year. Yep. Pair of three two sliders. Well, no sunshine today, but we're getting into the twilight time here in the next 10, 15 minutes or so. Just a little opaque up in that sky right now. Here's the Mercedes-Benz pitch track, and David Wright takes a high fastball and hits it a mile. That's about three quarters of the way up the blue seats, and the Mets, who've hit a bunch of homers in this series, four of them are on the board. Well, they didn't want to throw three, three, two sliders in a row. So Jordan Zimmerman tried to sneak the fastball by David Wright. You see Ramos setting up down and away. The fastball ran up and in. And David Wright was all over. Three quarters of the way up the bleachers. And left field. And it's David Wright's 380th career home run. Now up the middle is Escobar in front of the umpire. Ian Desmond on the shift for Luca du Lucas Duda stays home. And he goes up hacking and pops it up over to Ian Desmond. Next up, Travis Darno, the New York catcher. So you got a hot hitter. Look where he's setting up. He wants a ball out here. And watch where the ball ends up. Right there. And David Wright. Right into his turbo zone. You see the reach from Wilson Ramos. So just the run on that fastball cost Jordan Zimmerman a home run and the Nats a run. 19th Jordan's given up this year. Throughout the first two thirds of the season, the Nats staff, one of the stingiest in all of baseball in giving up home runs, but a lot of opponent long balls lately. Travis Darno's hit 10. He's four for 10 career against Jordan Zimmerman. Talented catcher, oft injured his last couple of years with concussion problems. His right elbow had to have surgery, broke his hand in April this year. Low and away, one ball, two strikes.
By the way, 280 or 233 home runs, 233 for David Wright. I uh, took his on base percentage and added three. <laughs> he has not hit 380 home runs. That ball well hit by Darno, and he's very late with it. Step away from the calculator, Bob. Two balls, two strikes. I need to step closer to the calculator. Oh, step away. Nobody gets hurt. Just step away. Two two pitch. That was nasty under the hands of the right handed batter. Second strikeout for Jordan Zimmerman. Well, I made the adjustment went in there. To Travis Darno for strike three, but really got on top. That was a good view of it right there. That one down and in with a lot of sink to it. This is true sink folks. See how that's going down and in. That's a sinker. You know, a lot of times people call a sinker when it just planes out and runs into a right hander on the same level. That one had some depth to it actually went down and in great pitch by Jordan Zimmerman for strike three. There's the rookie Michael Conforto. Home run here yesterday. He's at six in his first 34 big league games and Jordan gets the ground ball to the right side for Anthony Rendell. David Wright cuts the Nats lead in half. Balls are flying here again tonight. A nice little rain delay, you know, I got a little massage, changed clothes, uh, had a chicken salad, and then, uh, then tied it up. It was, uh, it was well written. Yes, it was, Jason. We're at this date three years ago. Two and a half hour rain delay. Worth would step out of the clubhouse and tie the game against the Marlins, leading off the bottom of the ninth, and then Corey Brown would win it with a tenth inning base hit. Nat 7, Marlin 6, a game that started at 106 in the afternoon, and the last pitch was thrown at 6.58 p.m. A moment in history brought to you by University of Maryland, University College. A little side note on that, Jason Worth was in his locker in that rain delay and just grabbed his bat and screamed, let's do it, and went spritting out of the clubhouse, fired everybody up, and had that at bat right out of the rain delay. So a uh, little John Belushi. Yeah. Nice. That was a little foreshadowing to a pretty big at bat in October. Had yeah, the at bat by Worth that rainy evening lasted for three minutes before he went deep. 1 1 to Michael A. Taylor trying to lay down a bunt. Looking third base way, David Wright was back. First inning for Matt Harvey. Things were happening quickly. Seven batters, 18 pitches, 13 strikes, two runs on four hits. Taylor three for 13 career against Matt. That was nice just to get a piece of that. That was a nasty curveball at 86. Maybe a slider from Harvey that hard.
six in the league in the RA at 2.60. Fifth in opponents batting average, only 218. Trevor's four hits were really welcome in that first inning. New month. Very, very good to Michael A. Taylor. Two to pitch. Good take. Counts full. Numbers keep on coming, how good he's been. Off speed went Harvey on three and two to walk him. And now Jordan Zimmerman can go up with a bunt in mind. The most impressive thing about Michael Taylor's play, and I'll get to it in a minute. That's Plus is back for 2016. Membership's on sale now. Enjoy the best seats of the house at the best price. Access to private on-field events and so much more. Memberships can give you year-round Nationals experience. Go to nationals.com slash Nats Plus and join right now. Is that that's the first time he's been close to the wall since he ran into it. Mm -hmm. And how many times have you seen guys shy away from the wall after they have a collision? Michael Taylor didn't. Jordan Zimmerman, a self-defense sacrifice bunt. That is really well done with a pitch like that coming at him. His sixth sacrifice of the year. Obviously, Jordan Zimmerman saw the suicide squeeze sign from Bob Henley. <laughs> <laughs> the runner on first. I'd close my eyes, too. <laughs> Do the limbo, Jordan. Watch him go down to his knees after he bunts this one. So that was hit or be hit. Jordan admiring his work. It doesn't matter how you get it done, just get her done. And Jordan Zimmerman did just that. Top of the order, Jason Worth. And uh, that's still the patch. Yeah. Maybe they'll never replace it where Michael A went into the wall. I, think I hope they leave that up there for a while. I think his kneecap is still in there somewhere, too. Yeah, he, uh, his kneecap made a dent about two feet above where the spikes created that gash in the wall. Jason Worth, four career hits against Harvey, but not an RBI yet. It would be a big answer for the Nats to get that David Wright home run run right back. Your hardball. I'm not even messing with anything else but the fastball. Just challenging Jason Worth with upper 90s. Great speed at second, one out, second inning. Tell yourself as a hitter, you know, the guy's throwing hard, he blows a couple fastballs by you. As you're getting in the box, you just stay short, stay quick, stay short, stay quick. Just simple commands to try to tighten up your swing when maybe you're trying to do some damage early in the count. You get a little bit long with your swing, but if you swing through him, you know he's beating you. So a veteran hitter will tell himself something like that short and quick. Pulls it. To the left of the bag foul. American Standard, who's hot and who's hot? The Mets and the Nets. They're both hot. Check it out. Plus 41 run differential on the road this year. And that's since August 20th. The Nats 10 and 4 record plus 38 run differential differential at home. Easy for me to say, but you get it. Celebrate the season with the American Standard All-Star Sales event. Visit MidAtlanticComfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. Worth a swing and a foul tip on a pitch up. 
He's down on strikes, and that's three for Harvey. Anthony Rendon got the rally started last inning, and he'll be hitting here with two outs. Lucas Duda way off the first baseline. So Anthony now, 15 of his last 17 games hitting around 320. Averages just over 14 pitches per inning this year. That's have him at 33 with two outs in the second. Some serious owner John Bryce. You think he's pitching around Rendon, who had a single first time up to get to Bryce? Wouldn't Crazy that be notion, something? huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess my mind didn't even allow me to go there. But uh, Bryce is 0 for 18 career against him. So either it's Terrible ownage, or somebody is seriously due, or both. Sometimes you just can't explain it. Rendon, and that is a fair ball right over the third base bag. Rendon digging for two. He's out. Looked like he might have had a bit of a stumble getting into the bag, but he sent Michael Lay Taylor home, who had scored well before that throw in the second base. The Nats get that run back and lead 3 1 after two. Of work. Zimmerman went just six innings in his last outing, or he went six innings rather, but he threw just 87 pitches. He pitched well. The Nationals were in a blowout. Matt Williams opted to get Zimmerman out of that game a little earlier than he might have otherwise. Zimmerman had gone 100 pitches, 116 pitches, on 106 pitches in his three starts going into that last outing. So the Nats wanted to give him a chance to get a little bit of a breather. Will it make an impact tonight? Maybe, maybe not. But Steve McCaddy told me earlier today, hopefully Jordan will feel a little fresher for it and that was the idea FP you were talking earlier about how Max Scherzer his workload earlier in the season might have affected him now down the stretch then that's trying to give Jordan Zimmerman a little bit of a break going into a big start here against the Mets I like it thank you Dan stuff. good stuff for the Coons.com sideline report when you're talking cars you're talking Coons Flores Harvey and Granderson for the Mets top of the third 
looking for the shutdown inning. It was hard to get yesterday on a couple of occasions. Wilmer Flores is four for 16 career against Zimmerman. And he pops it up to the right side for Anthony Rendon. It's time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo using hashtag Nats Couch Cam, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. That's where I picture everybody at home scrambling for a photo on their cell phone, on their couch. He's doing it. Selfie. <laughs> I was there. Curtis Granderson on deck. Matt Harvey. Seven for 58. He's hit a home run this year. He's a big man who can take some cuts. 135 career hitter in his first three big league seasons. Hits the breaking ball right off the end of the barrel. Looks down to make sure nothing slivered off there. It's a scary left sleeve, I'm telling you. And he's late for the fastball, and this is out of play. Right there. Mr. Matt. Yep. Yeah, he's the character on their batting practice caps, too. <laughs> I make fun of Mr. Matt. You know what? He's great. Your old buddy, Bob Guerin. You, you know, you have to look your fears right in the eye, and I actually like Mr. Matt now. Ish. 2 2. Harvey having a tough at bat here for Jordan. Finally gets the ground ball on the slider away. Rendon to Robinson, two outs. So first time around the order, the Mets go one for nine with the David Wright home run. I think Barrel Man in Milwaukee made me appreciate Mr. Matt a little more. Barrel Man. Barrel Man is just a freak show. Top of the order, Curtis Granderson. He'll take some time to give Harvey a breather. Big day yesterday, two doubles in RBI, two walks a run. Way better than the 227 he hit for the Mets last year. The year before that, his last win in the Bronx with the Yankees, he hit just 229. Similar to the pitch on which Jordan got him looking first time. No swing, says Paul Nard down at third. First two innings, 34 pitches, 22 strikes. Just missed. Trying to get another one, two, three inning. Not quite, and it'll be Cespedes now. This last pitch, fairly close in the bottom of the zone. Four and five. Pitches that could have went either way. Go in favor of Granderson. Cespedes with a new bat after he got sawed in half. On the first A-B tonight, a line drive to Ian Desmond with a bat going helicopter past the third base side of the mound. Jordan obviously keeping the ball away from this guy. Tom Goodwin over to his base runner for a visit on a 2-0 count now. 
to a dangerous power guy. And I think if you're the Mets, you just let Cespedes hit. I don't think Granderson going anywhere in a power count like this, but we'll see. Yeah, he doesn't run nearly as much as he used to. Zimmerman gets a strike on the inside edge. Seventeen, seventeen, and seventeen. Wow. I'm gonna say he's averaging seventeen pitches in inning, Bob. Step back from the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one. Up and a strike. Sussman is not crazy about the call of Dana Demute. Well, he wanted to get it in there. He did. Good frame by Wilson Ramos. Putting it right on the corner of the plate. And crowd on their feet here at Nats Park. They're into it. Yeah, they know how big this is. Early in the ball game. After we saw what the Mets offense did yesterday. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss on a pitch outside. Gave him the mid 90s heat. And Jordan Zimmerman pitches around the walk with his third strikeout. Escobar and Robinson, just an indication of the kind of damage these guys have been doing from 6 to 10 to 12 games out. Bryce fouled out first time up. I did not hear any negative reaction from the crowd when Bryce was announced for his first at bat. He uh, had some comments after the game about fans leaving the ballpark early. And FP, we know what a competitor Bryce is. He's out there competing, and he wants the fans to compete with him right down to the last out. Well, he's a passionate guy, and he, he, nobody loves D.C. more than Bryce Harper. I mean, every time a flight lands, he's the first guy to tweet, love being home in D.C., love the fans here. I mean, I don't think I've heard a player in the last three or four years talk about how much he loves the fan base here in D.C. So, you know, maybe a little frustrated after a tough loss yesterday, spoke his mind. And whatever th you think about it, I think it's refreshing when athletes speak their mind and don't give generic answers. I mean, you could hate what he said. That's your opinion. But at least he said what he was thinking, and he always does. You really never have to guess with Bryce Harper. But the one thing I do know about Bryce is he loves D.C. as much as anybody. Absolutely. And the fans. He always talks about him, and we're just shooting it on the plane. And, and for me, kept being here five years and watching this grow into a baseball town and seeing how the fans have come to this ballpark and supported this ball club. And everywhere you go in D.C., people wearing red, wearing curly W's. They love their team. They love baseball. If on a hot day and the last day of summer, they want to leave early, hey, 
That's your prerogative as a fan. Bryce didn't like it. He voiced it. Done deal. Well said. One out, third inning. Here's Escobar. Base hit the other way. First time up. Pop fly the other way. This time up over the dugout. Matt Harvey, 35 pitches through his first two innings. Escobar hits it sharply. Daniel Murphy right there. That ball almost ate him up, but he kept it right in front for the second out. That thing had some smoke on it. Dollar Hot Dogs presented by Hatfield tomorrow. And that's take on the Mets, 7 o'clock start. Dollar hot dogs will be available for purchase until you can't eat any more or until the Nats dog stands are out of them. Go to nationals.com to get your tickets right now. Dollar hot dogs tomorrow. Clint Robinson, big hit first time. And that guy holding the sign, he'll be on the mound tomorrow. Can't wait to see Steven Strasburg back out there at a big ball game. Clint got the Nats their first run with two outs in the first after the singles by Rendon and Escobar. Then Ian Desmond put a little icing on that two run cake and Clint's going to drop one into center. He'll give up that bat to go two for two and this guy continues to amaze. He's hitting over 270 now as a 30 year old rookie. That really died a hero. I mean, yeah. I mean, he got half a bat in his hand right there, but it's a beautiful thing. Drops in front of Cespedes for a two out knock. Take a million of those if you're a hitter. Yeah, you don't never know what Ian Desmond can do. Get him up there with somebody on base. Went the other way first time. He pulls it this time, but he didn't get it. Michael Conforto in left field and the Nats are gone in the third. That's an eight pitch inning by Harvey. Things happening quickly. Talking about uh, maybe four pitching staffs in the league Washington, St. Louis, the Dodgers, the Mets, Pirates on the fringe of that. And right now, it hasn't turned out that greatly for the Nets. Mets, a lot of young arms. So you look at that tail of the tape on the two pitching staffs. 
And right now it's St. Louis, Pittsburgh, New York, L.A., and the Cubs. With the Nats number six, the ERA rulers in the National League. So Jeep takes us inside some interesting numbers. Cubs, 22 games over 500. Yeah, how about that? They're only two games behind the Pirates now. They might have a little Wrigley Field in mind for that wild card game instead of PNC oh, Park. That might explode. Can you imagine how tough it would be to get a ticket for that in Chicago? Top of the fourth inning. 0-1 pitch missing to Daniel Murphy. He pinned Michael A. Taylor up against the left center field wall first time up. I was surprised today mildly to look at the numbers for the Nats. The bullpen ERA, which in the pen has been much criticized by fans and writers and observers all year. The bullpen ERA for the Nats is better than the starters ERA. 3.52, starters 3.86. Adding up overall to a 3.75, sixth in the league. I don't think Jordan Zimmerman can believe that Daniel Murphy just went to a knee and fouled off a nasty <laughs> curveball at 83. Here's Joe Ross. Eligible in the bullpen in the next day or two. And a high fly ball to right. That'll bring Bryce Harper to the edge of the track in the corner and he puts it away. And that ball in the air forever. Murphy didn't miss a homer by much. Then the offenses. Look at the Mets first and runs. Nats right behind him. Hits, homers. Only the Cubs have hit more homers th since the All-Star break than the Mets. So a couple of ball clubs that have really been swinging it well. Yeah, that uh, Cubs thing was coming into this game. 73 homers to the Mets, 72 since the break. But David Wright has taken care of that. And here he is. Well, he showed he can cover the fastball in. I'd be surprised if he sees that pitch anymore. Unless you really bury it down and in, similar to the pitch that Travis Darno struck out on in the second. 1-1. One, one. Look like he went. It's a swing. Ramos has to just pick it up and tag him. And David Wright is gone for the second out, fourth inning. Well, from the side, let's check it out together. Yeah, that's a swing. Good call by Mike Esterbrook. Good block by Wilson Ramos. Good pitch by Jordan Zimmerman. There's Mike. All right. He'll have the plate tomorrow night. Mike Esterbrook, 10-year veteran. Lucas Duda now. The Nats go into the shift with Rendon well out into right field. This is about as far out as you'll see a shift play anybody. I think you know Escobar might have to double as a cutoff man for the throw here. Just line him up to first. <laughs> I mean, that's just come over here and be the cutoff man. I guess maybe Ryan Howard might be the one guy in this league you would play a little deeper on a shift. Two and one, Duda popped up to Ian Desmond first time. Duda looks a little thinner to me than he did earlier in the season. Swing and a miss. Jordan Zimmerman mixing in some beautiful off speed tonight. Five strikeouts, middle of the fourth. The Nets by two.
Well, little air traffic control there, sending everybody the wrong way. Then he takes off, going the right way. Only one president would get chased. William Howard Taft and Teddy by a header takes the belt. So four presidents basically taking the night off. Ramos Taylor Zimmerman here, bottom of the fourth. You're taking a lot of nights off, Bob. Yeah, I don't know why. Well, they're not with us anymore. One pitch, one grounder, one out, fourth inning. Don't miss your last chance to celebrate an extended Labor Day weekend at home with the Nats. Enjoy new added fees on tickets for tomorrow's game against the Mets. Visit nationals.com slash stay to purchase your tickets right now. Michael A. Taylor leadoff walk in the second sacrificed courageously by Jordan Zimmerman. On a fastball boring in on him, then he scored on the Rendon two-out single. Anthony thrown out at second to end that inning. Taylor Tapper in front of the plate. He takes off. Darno plenty of time. Two down. For the achiever in you, PNC Bank with our minor league report. Mets goal. 343 in the last 10 games for Syracuse. 26 years of age out of a great baseball factory, Georgia Tech. Kevin Brown, Nomar, Jason Veritek coming out of Tech over the years. Matt Skoll. It's brought to you by PNC Bank. It's a big league name. I remember talking about big league names the other day. It's a big league name. Jason Worth. Big, big league, league name. Oh, and two to Jordan Zimmerman. Well, Matt gave Jordan a headache with a long at bat in the third. Jordan trying to extend this one now as Harvey is about to arrive at 50 pitches. Got him. 97. This one into the fifth. That was a seven pitch frame for the right hander. 3 1 Nance. And 11 curveballs. There's one. 39 fastballs. There's one. 
There's another heater. Another curveball. And looked like maybe a slider to Lucas Duda. So five strikeouts, $37 for each strikeout. Donated by Toyota dealers in the D.C. area. Travis Darno, leadoff bouncing ball, fifth inning. Only the Mets, second hit. Zimmerman had retired 9 of 10 since the David Wright home run. And then Michael Conforto, the young man out of Seattle via Oregon State, who bounced out to Anthony Rendon first time up. Heard Dan Plesak the other night on the MLB Network drop a Rico Bronia comparison to Conforto, and I think it's dead on. Yeah. He, he, just the way he's standing in the box, he looks just like him. Same stance, facial features very similar. Big young man, 6'1, 215, Mets first rounder just last year. He hit 331 at single A Brooklyn last year. They promoted him this year to their high A in St. Lucie. Then he went to Binghamton, went two for two in the Futures game, had an outfield assist in Cincinnati, made his Mets debut July 24th. Two balls, no strikes. Upstairs. Let's see if Terry Collins green lights his left fielder. This kid's got some pop. 31 hits as a big leaguer, six home runs. When Conforto was called up on July 24th, he became the 1,000th New York Met. I didn't know ball clubs kept track of that, but he was the 1,000th guy to put on the uniform. This year? <laughs> For some ball clubs, it seems like that. They've been banged up. So do you start the runner right here if you're Terry Collins? He has struck out 24 times in 105 at bats. They didn't start him. It's a double play ball. And Ian Desmond has plenty of time to turn the 4 6 3. Oh, hindsight being 20 20. Maybe a starter, but when you're toward the bottom of the order, then you pitch around one more floor, so you just really don't know how advantageous it is. Nice feed by Rendon. Desmond with the turn. Darno has to get down in an easy 4-6-3 double play and a nice 3-0 comeback for Jordan Zimmerman into a double play. Sure was. Here's the eight hitter, Wilmer Flores. It's a strike. Well, they had a couple of ground outs on that twin killing. And it's off to the right side. No balls, two strikes. Crowds into it here. Fifth inning, 3-1 game. Close and a fastball just under his elbows. Mercedes-Benz will track it. Jordan with a couple of steps to his dugout. He thought he might have planted this one in for strike three. Get back up there. Not a bad pitch. He's right back at it. Interesting in his recent starts, innings one and two, he had only thrown 51% strikes. After that, 72%. Well, tonight, he came out firing strikes early, and he's kept it going. And he's working really, really fast. Great tempo going. Got that two run lead and he is on the rubber ready to rock and roll. Not taking a whole lot of time between pitches. Always the case but tonight I feel like all of a sudden he's really getting it and going. Longest inning, the third, with a walk and a strikeout. One, two, three, fourth, two Ks. 
single double play here in the fifth. It's a good foul ball by Flores. That was a good pitch. Yeah, hardly seemed like he could reach it. Jordan Zimmerman, all time leading winner for the Nats, looking for career number 70 tonight. 174th big league start. A little cut to that fastball at 94. Flores put a good A-B on Jordan Zimmerman right here. Fouling off tough pitches, taking close pitches. Really making them work here in the eagle. Tenth pitch coming. Well hit to left by Flores. And Jason Worth is there right in front of the track. The next pitcher wins a long battle. Year, $250 to the Children's National Health System. Great cause. Thanks to our Lexus dealers here in the Washington, D.C. area, the pursuit of perfection. Yeah, and a couple of them have climbed right up that foul pole. We're going bottom five, Worth, Rendon, and Harper. Matt Harvey has retired six of the last seven Nats hitters. Fifty pitches, thirty-seven strikes, his first four innings. Worth pulls it. A lot of top spin on that one. Foul, one-one. Harvey has struck him out twice. A pair of sliders to start this at bat off. Jason Worth. Struck out twice on fastballs and Harvey going to his off speed. Maybe that tells you how he's feeling about his fastball here after just 53 pitches. We got one for you. If he's on an innings limit, which apparently is the case, how long do you let him go in this one down by two? Until he comes up again? And he's leading off the sixth. Is this it for him? 
Do you conserve innings if you're Terry Collins? Maybe get a start in against the Yankees before the Mets and Nationals play at the end of the year. That's when they said he'd pitch again if those games meant something. Pretty sure they will. He has struck out Jason Worth three times, and that's his fifth K of the night. But Anthony Rendon has been able to solve the puzzle. Yeah, first time up, base hit up the middle. Matt Harvey tried to flag it down. It was hit too hard. That was the first knock of the night for the Nats. There goes a no hitter. And then just kind of serves one down the third baseline. Look at that angle again. That was real close to being fouled. Maybe we can see that one more time a little bit slower. We didn't get a chance to see that one coming back from break. We had a lot going on, but that was very close. And Terry Collins came out and argued after the inning. He thought it was foul. And looking at that replay again, that was really close, wasn't it? Yeah, not reviewable. So this camera not on the line exactly. So that's why they can't review it. But Paul Nauert thought it went over the bag. And wow, that was close. I guess that's it's a, run. a nice way of saying it. Take it. Yeah, maybe it went over that outside corner there in the front. He's standing right there and we're way up here. Rendon hits it sharply for the third time. Daniel Murphy and now Bryce Harper will continue his quest to solve Matt Harvey. Steven Strasburg and Jacob DeGrom tomorrow night. DeGrom 12 and 7, Strasburg 8 and 6. It'll be his 19th start. The boys are off Thursday. On to Miami, make a three-game series stop there and then at the Phillies for some night games starting Monday. Another hard hit ball right at Murphy. Bryce Harper 0 for 20 career against Matt Harvey. But the Nats are ahead in this one 3 1 into the sixth. Mobile hashtag Nats couch cam good looking group at Nats Park not on their couch All right, thanks guys Kelly cartoon. I think it said right Something like that. Yeah Matt Harvey is hitting top of the sixth inning. He's only thrown 59 pitches in five innings Jordan Zimmerman just threw his 85th 
One ball, one strike. Interesting decision to let him lead off down by two with the innings limit. I'm sure he'll be asked about that after the game, Terry Collins. And a hopper over to Escobar. Next box, two hits. David Wright pulled one a mile on a full count pitch, leading off the second, his third of the year. And then a leadoff single, last inning by Travis Darno, bouncer up the middle. Jordan got him on a 4 6 3 double play ball. So Zimmerman is retired, 12 of his last 14 batters. And by the way, Matt Harvey, nine of his last 10. So the right field health club is starting to warm up out there. Curtis Granderson, the hitter, strikeout and a walk 0 for 1. Dropping 82 in there on the left hander. Branderson started, looked like he stopped, he did. Dramatic slow clap. Did, I didn't know there was such a thing, did you? Like this right here? Yeah, I got it. All right. I'm doing it. I don't know how dramatic mine is, though, but it's a slow clap. Granderson not surprised by the breaking ball that time, able to react and foul it off. Three two pitch again hits one well to center that ball really carrying and Taylor slips as it short hops the wall lands at his feet and into third base Curtis Granderson Michael A. Taylor hurt himself after the slip he had a hard time putting himself back together to pick up that ball and get rid of it. Did he lose sight of the ball at the end. I'm going to watch Granderson run the bottom, but I'm going to watch Michael Taylor on top. He put on the brakes right there. And then I think lost sight of the ball for a second. A little bobble, and that turned a double into a triple. Well, that ball got out there in a hurry. Granderson's second double of the year. So this is where he hits the brakes and he slips a little bit. And I don't know if his bad knee hit, but but that knee is has been barking. And anytime you run into a fence and your knee is bruised, you can just touch it on the grass and it sends shooting pains through your knees so Michael Taylor going to go back and check out his tracks right now he's walking toward the warning track to see what happened where he slipped he's looking at it what happened there tried to put on the brakes you see the, the grass where it kind of took a divot I look at it one more time I mean he had a good route and you're thinking he's going to run this ball down he's going to outrun this and then he slips probably hit his knee a little bit there finds the baseball and that little double clutch allowed Curtis Granderson to go from second to third Granderson to his credit wasn't slowing down a bit. Left hander Matt Thornton. It's matchup month in big league baseball with all these expanded benches and bullpens. So is he heating up for Murphy or a little later for Duda. The Nats right now up by two. So even with their bags at the corners, Escobar and Robinson, Desmond and Rendon up the middle are back, and now Escobar backs up some as well. 
You win a Cespedes 0 for 2. Swing and a miss. Well, this is empty the tank time if you're Jordan Zerman. 95 pitches, 61 strikes, 34 balls to this point. And he's pitching for a strikeout. He didn't want that run to score a third at all. And I like that pitch he just threw. Make him uncomfortable, and now you have the outer half if you want it with the slider. Throw one higher. Same pitch, try to elevate, see if he'll chase. Big moment in this ball game. 3 1 Nationals, sixth inning. Runner at third, one out. Fastball up, and he wasn't biting. Tried to. Pitch number 100 coming from Jordan Zimmerman. Let's see if he goes back to that inner half. Got him! 94 for the second out. Huge. Strikeout number six is first in three innings. He went back in there, too, with the fastball. Look where Wilson Ramos is set up. He elevated it. Probably wanted a little more in, but it got the job done. See Cespedes is pulling off right there, the release point, the rotation, and that's going to do it for Jordan Zimmerman, and he's going to get some kind of an ovation coming off this field. This call to the bullpen package by the UPS store, your one-stop shop. For all your small business needs, let us handle your mailbox service needs. We love logistics. Zimmerman, tough tonight. Lefty-lefty matchup coming here at Nationals Park. Daniel Murphy hit a sack fly against Matt Thornton last night. One for six career. And, of course, Murphy, great career numbers against Jordan Zimmerman. You can certainly see the move here by Matt Williams. It's outside. Well, 
Michael Taylor, Rob Murphy in the first inning going up against the wall. Last time up, Murphy hit one almost to the bullpen in right field. Bryce Harper on the track caught that. So, yeah, you totally understand this move. Target away. Murphy pops it up to center. It's going to send Taylor back, but not far enough for the Mets. Clutch move by Matt Williams. Clutch pitch by Matt Thornton. The Mets did well. Mercedes-Benz of Arlington, Mercedes-Benz of Alexandria. Three to one Nationals. Jordan Zimmerman getting her done tonight. Three hits, one run. He went five and two thirds, struck out six Mets. And the last one, the biggest one of all, a fastball up and in to Cespedes. With a runner on third and one out. He gets the Mets slugger. I just liked his rhythm more than anything tonight. He always works fast tonight. He took it to a whole new level on a really hot, humid night here at Nats Park. He was some kind of lathered when he came out of that game. Ben Harvey, meanwhile, still in there facing Escobar. Blake Trinan with David Wright due up to start the seventh, but then Lucas Duda after him. But two of the three batters are righties. Up the middle, Escobar hits the mound with it, and that is another multi-hit game for him. He ties Bryce Harper for the team lead with 43 games this year, with at least two hits. You now Escobar, professional hitter. Right back up the middle off the top of the mound, ricocheting into center field for a leadoff single here in the sixth. Yeah, important for the Nats to get the offense revved up again. They hadn't had a hit since the Robinson flare back in the third. But that first inning big, Rendon one out single, Escobar two out single. Robinson drove in a run, Desmond drove in a run, and then Rendon second inning. Anthony brought in Michael A. Taylor, who had walked the leading off that frame. Clint Robinson, two for two. He, you know what nobody talks about with Clint Robinson? It seems like every time he gets a start against a front line A pitcher, an A-list guy that, that he has a good game. Remember Madison Bumgarner, he had a good game against him here at Nats Park. You throw him up against somebody's number one, he usually comes through for you. And, and that's something for a guy that doesn't play every day. Usually you see the, the elite guys step up and get two or three against the number one starter. Clint Robinson has done it multiple times this year. Started this season with three big league hits in his career. 
Say one thing for Harvey. He gave up three runs on five hits in the first two innings. And then you looked up and after five innings he'd only thrown 59 pitches. Since then very efficient. Well, we knew that for the Nets to refire that offense. Here. Well, you knew they were going to be aggressive, and they were aggressive early, swinging at the first pitch, did damage, and they're still staying aggressive. Two one pitch. And, and the reason I say that is some are going to be hit, some are going to be outs, but I think that's how you attack Matt Harvey. You get that first strike and get on it. Almost like eight pinch hitters in the lineup. There you go. Get the first hittable fastball and fire off a good swing. Wow, look at those last four innings. 3-1 here. Robinson, another great at bat. His on base percentage is second among all National League rookies, and three for three in that department tonight gets him well up over 370. If Trevor Nats walk care first, Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 for girls on the run, D.C. The Nats have 452 walks for a total of $22,600. Care first, Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Good at bat line moving here in the sixth. Not the fastest base runners out there. Izzy and Desmond Bunting. Getting toward the bottom of the order, but a couple of live bats behind him here with Ramos and Taylor. I don't think the speed of base runners should determine whether or not you bunt. It just determines how well you have to place the bunt. If you have guys that are below average runners, just put a good bunt down. It'll still work. Squares early. Bunts it a little bit too hard. And then Harvey still goes to third. He had no shot. Once he bobbled, no chance at third and the bases are loaded. Yeah, I don't know what he's thinking right there. Usually when you boot a ball, especially on a bunt right back to you, you you go to first base and watch Matt Harvey right here go full panic mode once he drops the baseball and still goes to third. I mean, it's not even close right there. And I'm not down there, and I don't know who was yelling what. Could have been yelling 3-3-3, and then once he bobbles it, you have to know as a pitcher, even if everyone's screaming 3-3-3, you got to go to first base. The guys that were yelling three were basing that decision on if you caught the ball. Correct. Wilson Ramos. Yeah, the bases are loaded again for him. I've got that as a sacrifice fielder's choice. Ramos 0 for 2. Chance to bust this game open. And he was trying to do just that. Looks like they might just call it a straight fielder's choice. I don't know. Desmond laid down a, an okay bunt. All that matters now is how many of those three you bring in. the righty Sean Gill Martin the lefty and in the batter's box the 0 2 battle begins. <laughs> Ramos called out on strikes. Not happy. Mercedes Benz will track it for the first out. Well, Matt Harvey hit the spot. Whether it's in the box or not, we'll find out. Looks like a good pitch, good frame by Travis Darno. So 
Matt Harvey clutching up right there with a perfect pitch for strike three to get a big first out here in the bottom of the sixth with them loaded. Michael A. Taylor. This guy that likes to hit with runners in scoring position, Michael A. Taylor. I think Matt Williams is thinking he's got the right man in the right spot. Former Met on deck, Matt Jen Decker. Taylor a walk and a ground ball out. Trying to be aggressive. Tell you what, this is the ball game right here. This is a momentum shift either way. If Harvey gets out of this jam, momentum's in the third base dugout. If Nats clean up the bases and score a few here, obviously momentum in the first base dugout. So the ball game in my mind is in the balance right here, right now. Taylor up the middle. Escobar scores. Robinson's going to score. The ball gets by Cespedes. Michael A. Taylor is going to circle the bases. The Nationals lead 7-1. And maybe the momentum of the season just changed with one swing of the bat. How good has Michael Taylor been in the clutch this year? I mean, he's the new Mr. Clutch. Bases loaded, game on the line, doesn't matter. The kid comes through again. How much are you going to give us, Michael Taylor? And the fans want him on the top step right here, right now. A curtain call. A curtain call after a single. I've got him with a single, two RBIs, because Bob Henley was waving Clint Robinson. And then Cespedes <laughs> has tried to make something happen, and his error gave the Nats two more runs. That's it for Matt Harvey. Oh, what about the single, Bob? It's about what happened after the single. And that's what got this place going. Watch Cespedes is coming in for this and just fan on the ball. The ball actually took a tough hop for him looking at it again. Watch this last hop. You know something? Look at that. Right over his glove. I don't know if it hit a sprinkler head out there or what. But that's when everybody in the ballpark is playing third base coach. Look at 40,000 third base coaches. The whole dugout, everybody waving him in the background. And Michael Taylor with a little league grand slam to put the Nats up by six. How about that? You know, if there's a bad hop on the infield, it's a hit in the outfield. Why not? Why not? Far. I got that as a grand slam, Carp. I mean, that's a bad hop. You made a fantastic point going to break that if a ball hops over an infielder's glove like that, it's a bad hop. They give it a single. 
that ball obviously hit something, and Cespedes did not touch it with his glove. That's a, a that's a really good defensive outfielder that doesn't miss ground balls. And regardless, it's seven to one. But I think Michael Taylor should be given a grand slam on that. One out in the inning. Trey Turner, the batter, against Eric Goodell. So Harvey Dunn, after 74 pitches, 53 strikes. And the Nationals have a six run lead. Big curveball on the corner. Trey Turner caught looking. Two outs. I mean, what do you think? Watch the hop. I say watch the hop. Just for scoring's sake, watch. Look at that. I mean, it's a Super Bowl. It hit something and flew over his glove. I'm telling you what, Carp, if you're in the, the first base dugout near the Nats and you see something like that, you start thinking things are going your way. Little things like that, a ball fair foul like Anthony Rendon tonight over the bag, that hop right there on Cespedes, that's a grand slam in my book. He should not be given an error on that. That ball clearly hopped over his glove. Well, it would be one of the most amazing score changes of recent memory, and we'll see if anybody wants to do it. Top of the order, Jason Worth. I mean, the ball didn't go under his glove. It didn't hit his glove and come out. It hopped over his glove. Well, and, a, and an obvious bad hop, too. Not just that he misplayed the hop. That ball looked like it hit something and, and took off. 2-0 now to Jason Worth. Happy to be facing anybody but Matt Harvey, who struck him out three times. Worth against Goodell, 0 for 1 this series, 0 for 2 career. 3 and 1. And Worth will hit this one to the gap in right center. That's going to one-hop the wall, and Jason Worth an opposite field double, and he has a 10-game hitting streak. We called it, Carp. He wants to see anybody. But Matt Harvey, and a nice swing by Jason Worth, two-out double. Anthony Rendon against Eric Goodell, 0 for 2 career. Pass ball, 93 low. Good night for Anthony. Base it up the middle. Single over the third base bag and an RBI. So 341 during the hitting streak now. This crowd is still buzzing from watching Michael A. Taylor round four bags as quick as you'll ever see. One ball, one strike with two outs. Rendon takes one close, ball two. You know, in a Jordan Zimmerman start this year, the lights went out over the third base dugout, and Taylor Swift was to blame for it. Maybe Taylor Swift is to blame for that bad hop right there. And now, we can, and now we can call it even. 
a hole left over from the stage. Yeah. Two one pitch. And it'll be on the outside edge. Counts even two two. to the changeup. Huge hitting for the Nats. Escobar and Taylor hits. Robinson with a walk and a Desmond Bunt in between. Michael A circles the bases and the Nats put four on the Mets and lead 7-1. You can see plays like you just saw in true HD quality at MLB.TV Premium. Watch every out-of-market game live on more than 400 devices. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. Visit MLB.com today. Was that exciting or what? That was really something. Blake tried in for the seventh. By the way, the last inside the park grand slam in the major leagues was by Randy Wynn of the Tampa Bay Rays 16 years ago in 99. And that's a pitch up and into David Wright. Blake trying to got the loss last night. Facing one hitter. Actually, two hitters giving up a hit and a bunt in that Mets go ahead inning. And he misses away, and the count goes to 3 0. And all Matt Williams wants his bullpen to do now is throw strikes. There is no reason to nibble on anything for the next three innings. Well, you just want to get ahead. That's the most important thing. That ball hacked in the right and Bryce Harper over to pick it up on a hop. Because if you don't, that's what's going to happen. 
Blake Trinan and Dan has more. Bob, a couple of outings in St. Louis for Blake Trinan saw his velocity down in the 94-95 range, which is not what we've seen from Blake all year. He's usually sitting 98 around there. He told me that he noticed that after watching tape, but if the ball is down and has sink, he doesn't really care what the velocity is. He sat 94 to 96 as a starter. That's ticked up since he started working out of the bullpen, but he says the bottom line is downward movement and throwing strikes. And sometimes all that velocity will take away some of that sink. <laughs> there is nothing at all wrong with a 93 94 mile sinking fastball. All right. It's all about strike one. I mean, get ahead, you, you hit hitters on their heels. And he told me as much earlier in the season when his fastball is lower in velocity, it has more movement. Facing Lucas Duda here. Then he hits one in the air to Jason Worth in left. Every out big down the stretch. Travis Darno next. Darno, one career at bat against Blake. He was hit by a pitch. Side 2 0. Oh. Ramos visits. You know, on AstroTurf, you used to see inside the park grand slams because an outfielder might come in a little bit on a flare, all of a sudden, boomerang over his head. And those were considered grand slam, or rather, inside the park home runs because of the quote bad hop. Especially in day games when the AstroTurf heated up and the ball got super bouncy. Yeah. Come in on a blooper, you get too close to it, go right over your head, and everybody scores. 2 0 oh here. Trying in back in the strike zone. To bat, and Ian Desmond is right there. Two outs. All right, Nats fans, never miss a game update behind the scenes moment or exclusive contest. Follow at Masson Nationals on Twitter for all the latest buzz. Again, that's at Masson Nationals on Twitter. And we hope that guy's okay. Yep. Left oblique, he felt something after a swing yesterday. That bat's so hot, you'd hate to see anything interrupt that. Here's Michael Conforto with two outs, and David Wright still at first base. count. Tell you what, the best part of that was watching Michael A. Taylor get it going around the bases. He was flying. Just picking them up, putting them down, eating up serious ground, especially when he came around second. Saw that ball get by Cespedes and he just had another gear. Being told 14 and a half seconds to get around the bases. Four pitch walk. Two on, two out. That'll bring in Wilmer Flores. 
payphone. It's ringing. Yesterday, that thing almost blew up. Yeah, somebody racked up a phone bill yesterday. Yeah, and then it's, there's some overage down there. I heard, I think I saw throw it over the plate and figure it out. Seven runs allowed ties a career high for Matt Harvey and we said at the outset he was either going to have a gem tonight or it was going to be the exact opposite but nothing in the middle and seven runs on nine hits pretty much tells the story I think a lot of distraction a lot of mental energy probably burned for Matt Harvey between his last start and today way outside to Wilmer Flores Yeah, Wilson Ramos caught that. He's tell you about the movement on the, the try and fastball right now. But he needs to throw strikes in a big way. Only way the Mets get back into this game is free base runners. And a 2-1 pitch, fastball boring in on him. That'll even things up at 2-2. I'd say the energy from this crowd tonight's been fantastic. Sure has. on the move with two outs. Trident gets one on the inside edge and Flores able to stay alive. the middle base hit. David Wright will score. Conforto to third. And the thing that hurts is the two out walk and it's a seven to two game. Or the leadoff walk. Leadoff hit, excuse me. Kelly Johnson. He has hit a home run in this series. And he bats for the reliever Eric Goodell. That's a go to the lefty Felipe Rivera, who's been warming up. Wheels turning, seventh inning.
produced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Juan Uribe will be the right-handed batter against Felipe Rivero. So once the pinch hitter was announced, Matt Williams comes with the lefty Rivero. And then the Mets able to go to the experienced pennant race kind of guy, Juan Uribe here. He's swinging all the way. 0 for 2 career against Rivero. Yeah, do not expect a passive at bat here. Runners at first and third, two outs. Young pitchers trying to throw strikes. Couple of playoff appearances with the Dodgers after his days with the Giants. He drove in five runs. In the Giants, oh, actually the 2010 World Series. Had a home run in that series. He had the home run in that series. Series winner. One ball, one strike. Might be a four out deal for Drew Storm if good things don't happen here for Matt Williams soon. Curtis Granderson, the lefty on deck. Two on pitch. Coming in this game. I don't think to face Granderson, but definitely to face Cespedes. Ball four. Base is loaded. And the next bullpen giving the Mets a chance to get back in it here in the seventh inning. I mean, with a six run lead, here it is, hit it. Let your defense work behind you, pound the strike zone, keep the momentum on your side, and just be aggressive. Pull your hat down low and go right after guys. There's no need to hit corners. There's no need to hit spots with a six run lead. Make them beat you by swinging the bats. Granderson 0 for 3 career against Rivero. He got crossed up right there. That was supposed to be a first pitch slider. Yeah, well, sir, almost wants to know what's going on with that. I think you're seeing some young players in a pennant race for the first time. Blake trying in 22 pitches to get two outs and to give up a walk in two hits. Third base, Conforto. First base, Wilmer Flores. Pardon me, second base, and then Juan Uribe at first. With the bases loaded, a 1 1 coming with two outs. That's way inside the Nats are lucky that did not hit Granderson, who moved off the ball enough to avoid it.
And really, a lot of these pitches giving Dana Dubuth, uh, Dana Demuth, really no debate as to whether they're balls or strikes. But more importantly, the hitter. Not even close. Seven to three and now. Felipe Rivero has pitched his way out of this game. Yeah, it's Drew Storm time. And here comes Matt Williams. And the way the seventh inning's gone lately, he, he might want to get a priest up in the bullpen. Drew Storm against Ioannis Cespedes in a moment. Brought to you by Land Rover, above and beyond. And by visitannapolis.org. Find the Chesapeake experience at visitannapolis.org. Well, some of these waters a little choppier than they were just a few minutes ago. And the Nats are going to have to get the Mets out here. Right now it's a 7-3 game. Drew Storen will take on Ioannis Cespedes. And you know what you want assessment is this thing and he wants to make up for that ball that bounced over his glove right here. I mean not often in baseball do you get an opportunity to make up for what is now called an error. And now it's up to Drew Storm to save the day. And here we go. These two have never faced each other. So third base Conforto second base Flores. Actually, it's now Flores third, Johnson second base, and Granderson at first with Conforto scoring on the walk. Andrew Storen slider is way outside. Cespedes is taken all the way. Proud in the lower bowl standing. Cespedes into the left field corner. This is going to score at least two. Now Granderson's going to come around and he's going to score. And this is a seven to six ball game. Unbelievable. Seven to six. Unbelievable. That's what happens when you don't throw strikes. There's a reason the Mets are in first place. They take advantage. We saw this for. The last three years with the Nats when they had free base runners on good teams make you pay and that's exactly what happened. Right here in the seventh inning so the torturous seventh. Once again for the Nats. Trying in charge with two runs. Rivero charged with two runs. Now Murphy against Storin. And Daniel Murphy two for 12 against Drew with a couple of RBIs. Slider for a strike. Ninth hitter in the inning. 
still got to make a pitch. You still have the lead. And I'll tell you what, with any elevation, this is a tight ball game because you aren't assessed, but it's crushed that pitch. He now has 34 RBIs in 35 games with the Mets. Slider comes back in to get a strike. I also have to understand this is uncharted waters for Drew Storm. How many times has he come in with runners on this year? He's used to starting a clean ninth inning. He's used to starting a clean eighth inning. Whole different ball game for Drew. Whole different kind of situation right here, right now. Two pitch. Just a little bit low. Extra fastball, 96, reach back big time. Thought it was low. Huge pitch coming. Murphy foul. So I like the mental battle, you boy, won't they? Well, Cespedes, David Wright now healthy, just really transforming this ball club from the worst offensive team in baseball first two months of the season to now one of the most feared. Three two pitch with two outs. And that's the sixth consecutive consecutive batter to reach after the second out of this inning. Now it's David Wright. Is that the fourth walk of this inning? Yes, it is. Fourth walk this inning. The Nets. Have missed on 25 out of 41 pitches this inning. Somehow still ahead. And still damage done. You still have to make a pitch. You're still up by one. Doesn't feel like it right now with the rally in the run the Mets are making right here in the seventh. But if you can find a way to slow this thing down and realize, make a pitch. The process. Don't worry about the score. Throw the score out of your head. And do whatever you can to locate a fastball, to drop a slider for a strike. David Wright, four for 13 career against Drew Storm. And now the time runs at third base, the lead runs at second. On a wild pitch. And this is not good. And it just looks like everything's going so fast for these guys right now, but this seventh inning is a big time meltdown. Still same thing applies. Make a pitch.
Some fans in disbelief. Some exhorting Drew Storm to get this last out. 2 0 pitch. Not even close. That almost went to the screen. That defeated the umpire, picked up by Ramos. Nobody warming in the bullpen. The Mets have put six straight runners on. He can swing right here if he gets a pitch. is loaded. Wilson Ramos didn't know where that pitch was at first. And now it'll be a left-handed hitter, Lucas Duda, against Drew Storm. Fifth walk of the inning. Two by Storm. Two by Rivero. One by Trinan. Steve McCaddy. Slow walk to the mound. Now this is just to, to get Drew Storm back into it because he is going a million miles an hour out there right now. And this is a reality check. Hey, make a pitch. We still have the lead. What do you want to do right here? Because you can just tell. I mean, the wheels are going real fast right now. They're spinning hard. Lucas Duda against Drew Storm. Career three for nine. A homer, two RBIs. Nats four in the bottom of the six. Mets five in the top of the seventh. Duda, 0 for 3 tonight. Modified shift. Rendon in right field, but Escobar has to stay home, and that's ball one. are very close at all. And the Mets are just being very patient, looking for one pitch. This is what they do. They grind out at bats, but quite frankly, the takes have been pretty easy. Three consecutive walks after the Cespedes. Three run double. Mets dug out alive and well on the third base side. Jordan Zimmerman can't win the game. I mean, you can't. Matt Harvey is off the hook. You can't walk six guys in a game and with let alone six in an inning. You just can't. This is the big leagues. You have to throw strikes. Travis Darno, the hitter. 0 for 1 career against Drew Storm. Mm -hmm. 
Left-hander Matt Grace, a rookie, up and throwing for the Nets. With the power hitter Conforto on deck. Says it all. I mean, there can kind of come a point where you just pull your hat down and say, Enough is enough. And you see how far he can hit it. If he hits a grand slam, he hits a grand slam, but you can't keep throwing balls. I mean, he's not trying, but. That's. Bullpen has thrown over 50 pitches in this inning. And the ball popped up to the right side. It is out of play. says it all. And a ball drilled to right center. Bryce Harper will cut it off and catch it. Considering the time of the year, the opponent, the circumstances, may be the worst inning of the year for the Nats bullpen. But it's a tie game. Going into the bottom of the seventh, it's our Hyundai seventh inning stretch. 30,000 plus kind of exhaling here. I'm having a hard time believing what they just saw. Escobar and Robinson. 7 6 1 Mets, 7 9 0 Nats. The Mets just scored three, actually scored six runs on only three hits. I mean, you really don't have a, a bigger problem with that inning if the Mets are hitting balls off the wall and balls are flying out of the yard and they're squaring up strikes and you, you, you get aggressive, you pound the strike zone. And, but the defense had no chance that inning. You just saw Bryce Harper make a nice play on a bullet. Off the bat of Travis Darno, but they didn't have a chance when you walk six guys in. There's no defense for the walk, so now you got to regroup and find a way to score some more runs. When you were thinking seven to one was a done deal, we got a new ball game, folks. Price Harper hitting against Addison Reed, the former Diamondback, for the first time. He's had four unscored upon outings for the Mets, four innings, no runs.
Bryce tonight 0 for 3. Hasn't had many offers this year. He usually follows it up with a big game. 1-0 pitch. And that's in there from Reed 1-1. By the way, a six-run lead is the largest the Nationals have lost this season. Harper on a pitch up at a big rip. And before we try to forget that inning forever, the Nats threw 54 pitches, 19 strikes. One and two to Harper. Well outside. Found that fastball and fouled back. Jonathan Papelbon looking for a two inning save. If the Nats score, or is he coming this game tied? Probably either way, he's coming in, looks like. Yeah, it'd be hard to bring Drew Storen back out after yeah. 22 pitches and seven strikes. 2 2. Harper takes it outside. Nats need a base runner or two. Or Bryce rounding the bags, and he's worked the count full now after being behind. Escobar next, he's had a good night with two hits. And then Clint Robinson behind him, he's had a great night. Harper strikes out. Bryce 0 for 4. Well, he got his pitch, the fastball, he fouled back. It was an elevated fastball. Then after that, he had to battle. And he knew it when he stepped out. He was looking for that fastball belt high. It was a little above the belt. Missed that one. And got a good slider right there with two strikes for strike three. Escobar, two for three career against Reed. Escobar up the middle and he's done it again. Look at that. You know Escobar three for four tonight. And that's his 149th hit of the year. Takes the team lead from Bryce Harper. I mean, that's the definition of a C9 single. Watch him thread the needle right here. This will give you the best look. Watch this. This is the look we had from a little higher, obviously, but perfectly placed right up the middle. And the go-ahead run on board for the Nats here in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, Escobar now three for four career against Addison Reed. Clint Robinson 0 for 2 against him when the Nats battled the D-backs earlier this year. What a take. He's got such a good eye. All systems go 2 0 count, get something close, and see if he can hook one around the foul pole. And then not biting in the off speed, Addison Reed didn't throw him a 2 0 fastball. Clint Robinson, two singles in RBI, a walk and a run tonight.
Going to make him throw at least two strikes here. You could start, you know, Escobar here if you think that Clint Robinson is going to put a ball in play. Maybe you wait till 3 2. Leave that hole open one more pitch on the right side. Clint dropped his shoulders after that call from Dana DeMuth. Well, he's got a good eye, and whenever I see him with body language, it tells me it's a ball. He usually is. Well, that's not even that close. Tough break for the Nats. Now it's three and two. Robinson up the middle. Shortstop. Only one play. They couldn't get the lead runner. Murphy had too far to go to cover second. So Escobar's in scoring position with two outs. You think about pinch running Danny Espinosa here with Escobar on second base. You got a big bench, expanded rosters, maybe get some speed out there on a base hit. He scores easily, not guaranteed with Yunel Escobar. Ian Desmond tonight, one for three with an RBI single back in the first. Obviously the best arm out there, Cespedes. He's got a cannon. You can run on Granderson, and I'm not sure about Conforto. They haven't seen enough of him, have we? No. Desmond with 51 runs batted in. Big swings. One and two. strikes out. Nats are going to have to do something to grab the momentum back. We're going to the top of the eighth in a tie game. Seventh inning for the bullpen has us all tied up. I got to admit, I know you've watched baseball for a long time. You played at this level. Uh, pretty stunned at what we just saw about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I'm in shock. I really have no words for what I just saw. I mean, you're thinking seven to one. 
the ball gets by Cespedes. This is a done deal. I mean, th there was a time around here when a one-run lead after six innings was a done deal. So a six-run lead against uh, the team you're chasing, you think game's over, but maybe that's why the Mets are in first place. They battled. They fought. They had some good at-bats. But, I mean, quite frankly, there wasn't a lot of hard takes for the Mets no. in that sequence. Right. They, they weren't pitches that were just off the corner. And you saw Drew's body language after every ball he threw. He thought they were strikes, but but they weren't. And, hey, it, it was just hard to watch. I'm sure for fans, there, there's a few remote controls that are broke at home right now, and it's hmm. understandable. Well, the result of an 8-7 win is the same as a 7-1 win. So the Nats are going to have to find a way to get that. And Jonathan Papelbon for a couple of innings here. So Danny Espinosa has come in on a double switch. He'll be batting in the number nine spot, which will be, be third up next inning. So here's Jonathan Papelbon in the eighth inning and a pop-up. Danny Espinosa will let Michael A. Taylor call him off for the first out on Michael Conforto. Join the Nats on Wednesday. That's tomorrow, September 9th for Heroes Day, the final installment of the Patriotic Series presented by SAIC, being part of the salute to our country. And those who serve it, it's the Nats take on the Mets 705 start. Visit nationals.com to purchase your tickets today. All right, let's go mind eraser and just pretend it's a 0 0 game. And we start over for two innings. That's what I'm going with. Wilmer Flores. 0 for 2 career against Papelbon, and Jonathan throws one up and in. And that's what you have to think if you're wearing a white uni right now. You, you can't control what's happened already. It happened, and now you got to find a way to win. The glue of the Nets bullpen in recent seasons warming up for the Mets. Tyler Clippert for the eighth. And he'll have Ramos, Taylor, and Espinosa. One ball, one strike. Excuse me, swing. Can anybody reach it? Nope, not in the year long enough. Good try. That's all he could do. Wilbur Flores busting his bat. He's watching Papelbon now for the time he's been a national. It just seems like hitters aren't picking him up. He has that real close delivery. A lot of deception. We've seen 90 to 92 going right past guys. But that swing by Flores telling me that we've not seen it. Time rip there. <laughs> Got a one, two. Bounce down to third, Escobar to his left. Right on target for the second out. And if Jonathan, Jonathan Dappelbach is going to pitch two innings tonight, a quick eighth would be a really great thing for him. And the ball club, he'll have to face Kurt Neuenheis now. A left-handed batter who's one for two career against him. Nats outfield taking four or five steps back into a no double style defense here with two outs. Trying to prevent the double. Obviously, look how deep Michael Taylor is. Bryce Harper, Jason Ward. Newenheis, two for 18 as a pinch hitter this year. are on top eight to seven in the eighth inning with a pinch hit home run. That brings 
brings Juris Familia into the mix here in the next inning or so. Now they've got the lead. Well, look at the location of the fastball. 1-0. He was sitting on it right down the middle, and as soon as he hit it, you knew it was gone. And I don't know if I believe what I just saw. The Mets are up eight to seven. And that ball was hit. Top of the order, Curtis Granderson with two outs. Side for Anthony Rendo. Mets get a go ahead run on a pinch hit homer by Kurt Neuenheis, his third pinch hit all year. He'll stay in and play left field here as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And Tyler Clippard. Now with the Mets, he has a couple of saves. He had 17 with Oakland. And he's coming off a 41-pitch marathon performance in their dramatic loss to the Marlins in Miami Sunday afternoon. I'm looking at his arsenal from... This year compared to last, he's ditched the curveball basically. Threw it 7% of the time last year. He's only thrown it 1% of the time this year. He's thrown the split 8% of the time. And you all know about the fastball changeup combination. Velocity down just a tick for Tyler this year at 91 miles an hour on average on the fastball. Tyler Clippard, 32 saves for the Nats, the division champions three years ago. Then setting things up for, at times, Drew Storen and Rafael Soriano. Wilson Ramos. Get on from Michael Taylor, see what happens. Eighty one on the breaking ball.
Ramos facing a former battery mate for the first time. It's got to be weird for everybody involved. Ten o'clock hour arrives. Kind of feels like midnight. Nat suffering through a long, long Mets seventh inning. Now trying to battle back from a one-run deficit after leading by six. Owen to Ramos. How to play? I mean, that first base dugout has to be in shock, just like everybody else in the ballpark. You know, however you do it, you got to find a way. You got to fight and battle to the very end. You know, Jason Worth played a long time. I'm sure he hasn't seen many nights like tonight. But what's done is done, and, and players are good at turning the page. And I, I don't know how you do it in this one, but you got to find a way. Go to. There's the Clipper changeup, and he just left it up and in. He was walking off the mound like he thought he had a strikeout. Might have been the split if you watch the arc in this pitch. Watch it go from up to down. And he likes to throw that split as hard as he can with two strikes. He thought it was a strike. And I will laugh about it. Then he goes fastball. Ramos hits it high in the air to center, but it'll play for Cespedes. Long out. Just missed it. Bottom of the eighth. Michael A. Taylor. Yeah, last time up, Michael Taylor with a base hit up the middle, and it got a little nuts in the outfield. And watch Michael Taylor go. And you're thinking, okay, that's the one. That's the nail in the coffin. Lit the ballpark up. A little curtain call, like you said, on a single. <laughs> Well, maybe you can run into one right here. Taylor a walk and a run before. That base is loaded hit. Then Clippert leaves it upstairs one one. It's that split again. I don't think he's throwing a change up yet. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, he might be waiting for Danny Espinosa. He loves to throw it to lefties. Another effective thing he did was the high fastball when he could keep it in the strike zone or at least close enough. One and two now a battle for Michael A. Taylor. An eight for 91 two outs. So it's Espinosa now batting from the left side. And might have been the first change in the dirt. If the inning continues, Jason Orth.
boy, I, he's liking that fork ball, that split he throws, and it, it's been staying up. You know, last year when he threw it and he started toying with it, it was nasty. It would have some serious knuckleball downward action late, but, but tonight he's thrown it three or four times, and that's a dangerous pitch to throw up in the strike zone. He's got a good fastball going tonight, able to go to it to get Taylor now two and two on Danny. And now the Mets have three outs to get. So the Nance bullpen will try to keep it 7 8 7. Tyler Clifford with a 1 2 3 8. Tomorrow night, Jacob Degrom is 12 and seven. He'll be going for the Mets. Career against the Nats, one and two with a 3.68 ERA. Steven Strasburg will be coming back to start his 19th game of the year. He's four and two with a 2.64 in 14 starts against New York. Johnny and Ray with Nats extra 6:30 tomorrow night. Jonathan Papelbon, 11 pitches, eight strikes. In the eighth inning, he'll face Cespedes, Murphy, and Wright. Two, three, and four for the Mets. Jams the first batter, pop up right side. Wilson Ramos on deck circle right at the rail, one out. Nifty little adjustment right there on the pop up as he got close to the rail. Nets fans, be sure to get your tickets today to Nationals Winterfest coming this December 12th and 13th at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center. Meet and take photos with your favorite Nats player, test your skills in simulated baseball experience, and you can take a picture with Santa. To buy your ticket today at special early bird prices, call the number on your screen or visit nationals.com slash Nats Winterfest. Daniel Murphy is four for nine career against Papelbon with Three RBIs. 0 for 3 tonight with a base on balls. One ball, one strike. Well, there he is. He really brought it yesterday, and the Nets will have their hands full with Jeris Familia. Papelbon, great sinking action right there. Strike two.
I'll tell you what, big three outs to get for the Mets to hold on to win this. But if, if they come back against the team that's chasing them down by six runs, the feeling in the third base dugout is going to be we're invincible. I mean, yeah. they're already in first place. They were down six runs. They're thinking, okay, we're back four. We're okay. We'll fight tomorrow and get out of here. Maybe back five. But if they hold on and win this, wow. Papelbon, plenty of time yeah. after the drop. Two outs. Well, the fortunes of this game can change so dramatically and so quickly. I had a member of the media come up to me in the in the uh, Nats clubhouse yesterday before game one and say, well, the Mets are toast, aren't they? Everybody assuming because the Nats had swept and the Mets lost two out of three. Nats are home. You know, it's just how some people in the game think, and you never know what's going to happen that day or the next. If the Nats can't pull this out, they might turn a few things around tomorrow. But it'll be up to them to do it because this would be a tough one to swallow. Some will call it devastating if the Nationals can't come back and grab this one. And now tonight, some people might say the same about our ball club. The Nats are toast if they lose this one. Well, four weeks left. We've seen it go both ways, and right now it's going the Mets' way. Well said. That's why you play every day. I think the best thing he said is it's up to them. And it's about two, maybe three feet foul off the bat of David Wright. David Wright, two for three, a homer, a single, two runs, a base on balls tonight. Papelbon has him 0-2 and strikes him out. So Jonathan gets the job done in the ninth, but the Nets are down a run. Worth, Rendon, and Harper. Here Rally comes for me then. Rally everything. Whatever. Nationals as we head to the bottom of the ninth inning here in game two of three Johnny Holiday with Ray Knight will try to make uh, some kind of sense of this when this ball game is over this is incredible the Mets scoring seven runs in these last two innings well you know it, just not championship baseball you know the bullpen just imploded didn't matter who was out there they couldn't throw a strike uh, it doesn't mean that we are out of this game but we said must win game. We got to come back and somehow win this ball game. You know, anything can happen, as Bob said. But realistically, in this ball game tonight, uh, we basically had them put away. You know, you had two outs in that seventh inning before all that stuff started. And uh, my goodness, we threw 30 balls and uh, 30 balls and 13 strikes after the second out to Dorno. Uh, that that's almost hard to compute that you've got major league pitchers that cannot throw the ball over the plate the way that we had tonight. Well, stranger things have happened. We have seen the Nationals behind before. They've come back to pull it out in the bottom of the ninth. We hope we can duplicate that in this inning. Let's go back upstairs to Bob and FP. 
All right, Johnny, thank you. Ray, thanks for your analysis. Yeah, it looked like the Nets had the Mets put away. It was relatively early, but a six-run lead is a six-run lead. So Ruben Tejada's in at short. And you look at Familia, 65th appearance, fastball 97, slider 90, and that split average is 93 miles an hour. Yesterday it was 96, 97. I thought the key at bat in the seventh was Uribe. He's a guy that's tough to walk. Walk. Yeah. Jason Worth takes a strike. One for five career against Jerris Familia, who yesterday in the ninth, actually Worth got a base hit off him to start the inning. So Jason two for six career. Then he struck out Rendon Harper and Ryan Zimmerman to end the game. Rally lids. They're still open. Word hits it hard up the middle for a base hit. He takes an over three and turns it into a two for five. And in this series, two for two against Familia. He's fired up. He ain't quitting. A nasty slider. Look at Worth go down and get that. And had a few words for Familia as he went to first base. Hmm. You love the fire from Jason Worth right there, don't you? He ain't quitting. Anthony Rendon, 0 for 4. Familia, as I mentioned, struck him out yesterday. Anthony throwing the ball, or rather hitting the ball well tonight. Two hits, a run, an RBI. Time runs on base. Looking the bunt, and I might have hit him. Uh, that was close, or did it get his bat? Thank God's bat. I think it's a foul ball. Wow, that was close. 97 just chasing him. Couldn't get out of the way. And Matt Williams choosing to bunt Jason Worth along with Anthony Rendon. Bob Henley going to talk to Rendon right here. Did he miss a sign? Are they going to keep the bunt on? And do you pitch to Bryce Harper if you do advance Jason Worth right here? All things you have to think about. Fans into it. Yeah, this crowd's been through it tonight. Rendon pulls the bat back. Ball one. Well, tough situation. Anytime you, guy, you got a guy throwing almost 100 miles an hour, deadening the ball becomes very difficult. How do you do that? You slide your hand farther up on the barrel. You try to make the first bounce be in the dirt, and you're hoping that Jason Worth gets a pretty good jump. But as a base runner, the bunt has to get you to second, not your jump. 1-1. One, one. High and tight for ball two. Do you take it off here, heading the count 2-1? Familia thinks you're bunting. You might get a fastball right down the middle. We'll see if Matt Williams keeps it on. Wheels turning here in the bottom of the ninth, and that's clinging to life. Squaring again on two and one. Takes it outside. I mean, you have a guy right now that can walk him off with a 3-1 fastball, catch it out front. And, and it's going to be very interesting to see if Matt Williams keeps the bunt on here in a 3-1 count. I mean, you, you could play for the tie, or you could think Rendon could run into one. Either one might work. We'll see what Williams does. Squaring on three and one. Hard bunt. Throw to second. And the sacrifice does not work. 
Lucas Duda picking that thing up and firing it to second base. Well, it's just hard to bunt 99, and you kind of had that feeling the whole at-bat. It was going to be tough to get Jason Worth to second base, and now maybe Anthony Rendon can find a way to steal second. Let's see. Now they have to pitch to Bryce. Bryce Harper 0 for 6 career with six strikeouts against Familia. Trying to find a way to reverse that. Chopper. I remember yesterday Bryce Harper got that split from Familia at 96 miles an hour. One of the nastier pitches anybody's seen all season long. One swing and turn the night around right here, I'll tell you that. Inside. Counts even, one more. Well, in that hot streak against the Braves back in May, Bryce was unstoppable. If he catches 98, it's going to hit the buildings on the other side of the scoreboard. That's the split right there, and that's just filthy, rotten man. That would be four with a split. Yeah, well, watch the grip. And look at the action. That's just not fair is what that is. What a pitch. And a one two with one out. In the dirt, and Darno had to pick it. What a play by Darno. He just kept a tying run at first base. There's no way that he picked this ball. About a 58 foot split from Familia, and Travis Darno gloves it. This is a split, folks. Look at the action. That was 96 miles an hour. Hmm. Don't often talk about. A catcher picking a pitch being the play of the night. Might be right now. Two balls, two strikes. Price made an offer. No swing, says Paul Nard down at third. I have no idea how he held the swing right there. That was a split again at 95. And watch, well, you'll see from the side, but when he had to make his decision, it was every bit of strike. Huge pitch coming. Huge. Inside. Bryce Harper walks. Two on, one out. Now the Nats have two shots to tie it or better with Escobar and Clint Robinson. Gutsy at bat by Bryce Harper. Great at bat. I mean, the, the take was the 2 2 pitch to get the 3 2. How he laid off that split, I'll never know. And all of a sudden, the winning run on, the go ahead run on for the Nats here in the bottom of the ninth. My goodness. When I said in the first inning, put your helmet on yesterday, it was going to be a wild ride. I had no idea it would be this wild. Escobar looking for his first base hit against Jerris Familia. Three hits tonight. Even his out was hard. A ground ball to second base in the third. He has gone to right and twice up the middle tonight. Heads up for that split in the dirt if you're Anthony Rendon on second right now. Trying to end it right there, wouldn't he? Got a piece of it. 
tipped into the mid of Darno. Take two and go to right. Escobar, 46 runs betted in. Everybody's stressing right now. Tension level high here at Nats Park. Go to pitch with one out. That's a bouncer to third. David Wright to Murphy. The Mets turn a double play, and they win the ball game. They have absolutely stolen one in D.C. tonight. That's a backbreaker. Six in the seventh, a pinch hit home run in the eighth, and the Nats and their fans and their broadcasters are shocked right now. So the Mets have a six-game lead in the East instead of a four-game lead, like we thought it might turn out tonight. I'm not going to lie, that's a tough one to come back from. If the Nats rally and, and find a way to pull this thing out, after that loss, it's going to be tough this late in the season. But you never know, stranger things have happened. Goodell the winner, Applebaum the loser, Familia with his 38th save of the year. For FP and Dan, Bob Carpenter, the final. Yeah, it's hard to say and it's hard to believe after everything that happened, Mets eight, Nationals seven. Tomorrow night, the Nets will look to Steven Strasburg to salvage a game of the series. Johnny and Ray with Nets Extra 630. This has been a presentation of Masson. Stay tuned, Nets Extra right now from the